。哎，来杯咖啡，继续学。咖啡 ，Java， 对吧？哪个程序员能不喝咖啡呢？是吧？但是也不能喝太多。我发现喝咖啡太多了，胃可能会犯酸。是的。稍后啊，稍后。OK， so， 我们来看一点五，一点五节 applications of compiler technology。嗯，这段应该讲的是编译器呃的技术所，编译器所设计的技术，它都能用在哪些方面？除了编译器之外。Compiler design is not only about compilers. Many people use the technology learned by studying compilers in school, yet have never, strictly speaking, written even part of a compiler for a major programming language. 对，这之前也提到过了。大部分人这辈子都不会去写编译器。那你学了有什么用呢？啊、uh, ，我们来看 ，compiler technology has other important uses. Uh, as well. Additionally, compiler design impacts several other areas of computer science. In this section, we review the most important interactions and applications of the technology. 我们看到底学了有什么用？就算我们去，我们不去写编译器，它一定是有一些用途的。Implementation of high-level programming language. 对的，这个，那这个还是写语言了、啊。High-level programming language defines a programming abstraction. The programmer express expresses an algorithm, algorithm, an algorithm using the language, and the compiler must translate that program to the target language. Generally, higher-level programming languages are easier to program in. But are less efficient. That is, the target program programs run more slowly. Programmers using low-level language have more control over a computation and can, in principle, produce more efficient code. Unfortunately, low-level programs are harder to write, and worse still, less portable, more prone to errors, and harder to maintain. This is low-level programming and low-level programming. 嗯，或者 low level 的这个语言之间的区别，大家都已经熟悉了。嗯、um, ，那 optimizing compilers include technique to improve the performance of generated code, thus offsetting the inefficiency introduced by high level abstractions. 嗯，这儿举了一个例子，那低级语言写起来比较。比较比较不够可移植性差，然后容易写错，容易出错，对吧？这都是它的缺点，但是它的就是比较高效。嗯，那跟刚才说的这个话题有什么关系呢？就是第一个，他说的就是，就是其实他还没解释，就是怎么才能把高级语言变成低级语言啊？这这个这个的确是 compiler 的做的事儿啊，但是学完之后。是帮助优化什么？可能他是这个意思啊。我们来看一个具体的例子。The register keyword in the C programming language is an early example of the interaction between compiler technology and language evolution. 哎，我还有点印象，其实我也不是特别熟悉 C 语言，但是我听说过这个关键词。关键字吧，关键关键字就是 register。那 register 他说就是一个比较好的一个例子啊。Uh, 那 when the C language was created in the mid 1970s, it was considered necessary to let a programmer control which program variables reside in registers。啊，当时 C 语言一九七零年代被创被创造出来之后。之后，之后，当时希望能够让程序员对，呃，变量把它放到哪一个寄存器里面，这个要让它有掌控，所以就产生了 register 这个关键词。为什么
要有这个掌控啊，就是有什么好处啊？就把不同的变量放到不同的寄存器里面，是不是？寄存器里面各个寄存器它的区别是什么呢？是不是读取速度不一样，还是还是怎么的？我们来看一下啊。This control became unnecessary as effective register allocation techniques were developed, and most modern programs. No longer use this language feature. Okay, he just actually didn't explain the difference between the different寄存器之间的区别。嗯，但是就是后来由于 C 的技术发展了，就是如何选择寄存器，这个算法变得非常有效。那接下来你就没有必要让程序员主动的去做这个操作。所以这个 feature 啊。就没有没人用了。<coughs> In fact, the programs that use the register keyword may lose efficiency. 反而，那变得，嗯，变得就是效率降低效率啊。Because programmers often are not the best judge of very low-level matters like register allocation. Ah,、uh, the optimal choice. Register allocation depends greatly on the specifics of a machine architecture. Okay, 对了，就是跟我们我们刚才猜的是类似的，就是为什么呢？非常底层的，嗯、呃，大部分程序员嘛，做软件的，他对硬件的可能就没有那么的关心，因为你要大部分你的思考的内容都是在上层的底层的什么架构，你你你可能没有必要去知道。大部分的应用层的开发肯定是这样的，除非你是做，呃，就是嵌入式的底层的这些，可能需要知道架构啊。嗯、um, ，so so the um hardwiring low-level resource management decisions like register allocation may in fact hurt performance, especially if the program is run on machines other than the one for which it is written. Okay. Anyway. 这个这故事，大家是应该是听明白了。The many shifts in the popular choice of programming languages have been in the direction of increased levels of abstraction。就接下来的<咳>历史证明啊，就计计算机语言的发展主要是朝着不断的抽象化，就不断的一层一层往上抽象啊。嗯，这个。总体的方向这么发展的。C was the predominant system programming language of the 80s. Yeah, many of the new projects started in the 90s chose C++. Java, introduced in 1995, gained popularity quickly in the late 90s. The new programming language features introduced in each round spurred new research in compiler optimization. In the following. We give an overview on the main language features that have stimulated significant advances in compiler technology. 对吧？这个简单回顾了一下，那个就是主就是不同年代的它主打语言呢。那你看，在八十年代就是 C 语言啊，那九十年代的时候就变成 C 加加了，越来越多。九十年代末就是 Java 这三种语言。但是现在呢，你看这个语言。就这几个语言仍然非常活跃，但是同时又出现了，呃 ，Python 这种语言。但当然，这个呢，就主要是由于它的应用的主导。就是后来其实又有 JavaScript 的这个 Web， 就是看你什么样的应用主导这个时代啊，对吧？那 Java 仍然活跃，它也是得益于那个安卓嘛，它使用的是 Java。然后现在不是人工智能啊。大数据啊，这不就是就变成了那个 Python 吗 ？Anyway， 这语言呢，只要搞计算机，就是永远是一个热点话题。所以，我们语言背后就是编译器。所以，这个 compiler 这个知识是是真是很,很好用啊，一定要花时间。就它这个是回报率是很高的，对。所以我们就是花点时间，就是一行一行往。啊，一千三百，一千零三十五页，对啊，我们就一一页啃吧，就是啃，就是大家啃下来是应该是有用的
、呃，还同时还学点英语，对吧？这跟着我，咱们还学点英语，这不挺好的吗？嗯、um, ，In the following, we give an overview of the main language feature. Okay, practically all common programming languages, including C, Fortune, and Cobol, support user-defined aggregate data types such as arrays and structures. High-level control flow such as loops, procedure、uh, invocations, procedure invocation, the invocation call. This is, 就是呃，对函数啊，你叫就是呼叫这函数，呼叫调用函数调用啊 ，invocation. 那所这些你看语言的特性，这所有的语言都是有的，对吧？你包括用户自定义的这种集合型的数据。嗯，对啊，这是这个，比如说数组，还有这个 structure 这个东西，这就非常有用了。就是你大部分的，就是现实生活中的大部分的事情，你都可以通过 structure 这个东西来来代表。If we just take each high-level construct or data access operation and translate it directly to machine code,、um, the result will be very inefficient. A body of compiler optimization, known as data flow optimizations, has been developed to analyze the flow of data through the program and removes redundancies across these constructs. They are effective in generating code that resembles code written by a skilled programmer at a lower level. Yeah, 我们之前提到了这个叫做数据流，数据流的呃优化。那这种呃，它主要的目的啊，就是减少了重复啊、呃、冗余啊。那么它产生的呃代码，就是经过优化之后产生代码呢，它它就像一个底层的，就是非常熟悉底层语言汇编语言的这种人呢，是写出来的代码一样啊。嗯、呃、，object orientation was first introduced in Simula。1967， 啊，这又提到了一嘴那个面向对象了。呃，其实一九六七年的时候，这概念就有了，在 Simula 这个语言里面。And has been incorporated in languages such as Smalltalk、C 加加、C Sharp 和 Java。那后来就是一种已经一手遮天了，可以说是这种面向对象的语言，至今也是这样的。And、the key ideas behind object Orientation are data abstraction and inheritance of properties. 对吧？它的好处最强的好处就是这个数据的封装，或者是抽象。这个 abstraction 应该是抽象的意思，但是我感觉封装也很重要，抽象化。嗯，然后就是嗯，继承。那继承的话，就好处就是你的代码不用来回重复写了，是吧？ Okay, so both of which, both of which have been found to make programs more modular and easier to maintain. 主要是能够就通过这种嗯方式可以构建复杂的系统，那模块化就好了，对不对？模块化好了，然后你还容易你维护，这都是很重要的一个对于软件工程上面来说的意义啊。所以说，它很多。特别复杂的系统，它都都来使用这种。当然，呃，这个最著名的 Linux， 它的呃是就是创始人啊 ，Linux， 他一直坚持使用 C 语言来写它操作系统，那也是一个超级大的庞大的一个一个代码库。但但是，当然我也不熟悉啊 Linux 的那个代码。所以我不太清楚它是就是在这么超大规模的项目中中，只使用 C 语言，它是怎么怎么能够不不不,不,不迷失方向的，是吧？而且有啥错的话，它仍然能够能够解决啊。所以说，那个怎么说呢？这些优点也都是相对的吧，应该这么说。嗯、um, ，object-oriented programs are different from those written in many other Languages,、uh, in that they consist of many more 
but smaller procedures called methods in RE object oriented R oriented terms. 那这个意思就是说，它模块化了之后，你就把它很多逻辑啊，你是分成特别的细小的部分，所以你就能看到特别多的小的啊、呃、这种呃函数，它就干一件事儿。这其实和函数式编程也是挺类似的。Thus, compiler optimization must be able to perform well across the procedural boundaries of the source program. Procedure inlining, which is the replacement of a procedure call by the body of the procedure, is particularly useful here. Optimization to speed up virtual method dispatches also have also been developed. 啊、哦，这块讲的是编译，对于一个编译器来说，你这个面向对象这种编程风格的话，你你相应的有哪些优化方式呢？你看，哎，正因为他刚才说的，就是他特别多的小的 procedure， 那他有一些，嗯，特别适用于，呃，面向对象编程语言的这种优化方式，比如说就是 procedure inlining， 对吧？啊、呃，还有这个，呃，还有就专门针对 virtual method 的虚拟方法，呃 ，dispatches 就这种，呃，就比较特殊的优化方式了。Java has many features that make programming easier, many of which have been introduced previously in other languages. The Java language is type safe, that is, an object cannot be used as an object of an unrelated type. 那 Java 语言就是一个类型安全的一种语言了，它就不会自动的把不同类型的语呃对象啊来,来混在一起用，它自动转换不会的。All all array access are checked to ensure that they lie within the bounds of the the array. The Java has no pointers and does not allow pointer arithmetic. It has a built-in garbage collection facility. That automatically frees the memory of variable variables that、uh, are no longer in use. While all these features make programming easier, they incur a runtime overhead. Incur 就是产生了的意思，造成了。对，看见吗？产生引致，因为后面接的不是什么好好的好事啊。So. 那它这里面就是 Java 的有一些优点，但是它的运行时候啊，啊就是 runtime 运行时的时候，它就会有一些嗯 overhead， 对吧 ？overhead 就是一些额外的一些工作，为了来保证它的那些优点。So compiler optimization have been developed to reduce the overhead, for example by eliminating unnecessary range checks and by allocating objects that are not Accessible beyond a procedure on the stack instead of the heap. That OK. That 这里面针对 Java 语言的呃这种特性，你尤其是它的 runtime。那么为了让这个 runtime 变得更加的有效，有相应的一些优化的手段，对吧？啊，他这也举了几个例子。Anyway, effective algorithm, algorithm,、uh, effective algorithms have been Also have been developed to minimize the overhead of garbage collection. 包括它的垃圾，呃，回收，垃圾回收。In addition, Java is designed to support portable and mobile code. Programs are distributed as Java bytecode, which must either be interpreted or compiled into native code dynamically. That is just、uh, at runtime. So dynamic uh, uh, compilation. Has also been studied in other contexts where information is extracted dynamically at runtime and used to produce better optimized code. In dynamic optimizing optimization, it is important to minimize the compilation time as it is part of the execution overhead. A common technique used is to only compile optimize those parts of the program that will be frequently executed. Okay, <coughs> no. Java 语言呢，还有另外一个特点，就是它，它是能够支持移动设备，是吧？包括手机这些东西。嗯，那那 Java 语言实际上是它，它先
被编译到这个 byte code， 然后 byte code 在在 runtime 的时候，它才会被呃进行编译到底层的机机器码。那所以说，你这个从 byte code 到机器码，你这个编译要快啊，对吧？那你要不快的话，你用户你也等啊。所以说，你为了让它快，你这编译器啊，你要做很多相应的优化。OK，Anyway，、okay, 这其实这个他又回到了优化这个上面了，就是不同的新的语言，后来出现了这么多新语言嘛，这个新语言又有新的特性<咳>，新的特性就需要你的编译系统提供这些相应的新的新的挑战吧。刚才这段说的就这意思。嗯、um, ，我看一下，是不是要休息一下？好的，休息一下。